This lesson is about making colored crystals. You're gonna need your choice of Epsom salt, sugar or salt, food coloring, Ziploc bags for storage, and a messy mat to keep your space clean. I began by putting a scoop of Epsom salt into a Ziploc bag, poured a little bit of sugar into another, and a little bit of salt in the last one. I then chose what color food coloring I wanted to use, and for this I chose to do all three of them blue, just so I could see how each material reacted with the food coloring. I zipped up the Ziploc bags and I used my hands to squish the color around until it was well blended in. After mixing all three together, I noticed that the Epsom salt had larger crystals, the sugar had smaller, almost sand-like consistency and was lighter, and the salt was a little bit darker. After comparing all three together, I chose to use the Epsom salt for the rest of my colors. I added in food coloring to each of the bags to mix up all the different colors of the rainbow. I did have some issues when I tried to make purple. The other color combinations when I mixed up the secondary colors was not an issue, but for some reason when I tried to mix together the red and the blue, it kept giving me more of a brown color. I tried to add in some extra food coloring drops just to see if maybe I could get it to turn a little more purple, but as I added in more drops and mixed those around, it ended up making black. I decided to keep the black for later because it could be useful, but I wanted to try one more time mixing up my purple. So this time I took a tablespoon, I measured out one tablespoon of red into my next bag, and then I also measured out one tablespoon of blue, so it was an exact even amount of each color. And I decided to see what would happen then. A Little bit of a science experiment here. I mixed them together, and again I ended up getting more of a brown color instead of my purple. I came to the conclusion that maybe the food coloring wasn't the exact pure pigment of red and blue and maybe that's why I was getting these different colors or perhaps it was just the way it was reacting with the Epsom salt. I left all of my Ziploc bags open overnight so they could dry out just as the color was starting to finish bleeding and blending into that Epsom salt. I wanted to make sure that it was as dry as possible for the next day when I was going to make art with my colored crystals. The next morning I checked on all the bags and everything was looking really good. I could see that it had dried out a little bit more. If there was any clumps, I could easily break those apart by just poking it through the bag. And I could still see that my sugar was lighter, had more of a sand-like consistency, and the salt was just a little darker. I was trying to think of what to do with my different color crystals and I was reminded of sand painting. Sand painting has been established in cultural history in numerous social groupings around the globe. They're often temporary ritual paintings prepared for religious or healing ceremonies. Some refer to this as a dry painting. I decided that the easiest way to make my crystal art would be to push all the crystals to the corner of the Ziploc bag and use the other corner as the space where they would pour out. I cut that corner off with some scissors and I easily was able to pour the crystals out of that corner then and better control where they were landing. I really wanted to add in some purple crystals onto my design, so I tried a little bit of purple paint with the Epsom salt, mixed that around, and it did make purple crystals. They were just a little more wet than the other crystals. I also decided to try to play around with those black crystals that I'd accidentally made earlier. After I was done making my different designs, I then decided I was going to destroy it by mixing all the colors together and seeing what would happen.